You are listening to Book Clips, a podcast where authors and narrators expose you to excerpts from different books. You can find the show and more by searching for The Lesbian Talk Show on iTunes, Podbean or Stitcher. Hello, I'm SM Lee and today I'll be doing a reading from my novel, The Chronicles of Erinacea, Book 1. I would also like to note that The Chronicles of Erinacea does have violence, though this particular reading does not. Chapter 14 The next day, Zeteria went to the women's gardens to continue her strengthening exercises. Tess also went to ensure Z didn't push herself too much. Z worked through her warm-up routine and noticed Tess watching her raptly. You don't have to babysit me, you know. I'm not here to babysit you. I'm here because I want to be. Why? Tess hesitated. Because... I like being around you, she said. You're watching me rather closely. Tess flushed red. I like watching you train. Zeteria's stomach did a little jig inside her belly. She gazed at the woman in front of her. Her eyes traced down the line of Tess's cheek and neck, stopping at the subtle curve of Tess's breasts beneath her dress. Z started when she realized where she was staring and turned back to begin the itelli. Out of the corner of her eye, Z could have sworn she saw Tess smirking, but she dared not look back. Tess bit her lip as Z began to warm up. Why did she enjoy it so much when Z looked at her like that? Sweat began to drip down Z's neck as her body heated up from the exertion. The added moisture enticed her tightly bound black hair to escape from its cue and began to curl into tight ringlets. The sheen of her sweat made Z's dark skin shimmer in the bright sun. Tess enjoyed watching as Z's well-muscled body flowed through every move she made. She'd watched many men fight and train, but most of them were all brawn. To her, Zeteria made the moves look beautiful. She was agile and precise, where the men she'd seen were forceful and sloppy. Even her brother tended to be too forceful. Z spun, whipping her sword around in an arc at an imaginary opponent, before she sidestepped and brought her sword in for a piercing strike. Tessa's eyes never left her. After she finished her training, Z went to sit next to Tess underneath a cherry tree. I think we should go back to the records archives, Tess announced after a few moments of awkward silence. Z blinked in surprise. Why? I want to see how my reading lessons are working. It's one thing for you to continually read the gibberish that I write in the sand for you. It's quite another for you to actually read real books and scrolls. And who knows? Maybe we'll find something interesting. Maybe, Z said with a nervous shrug. But she nodded anyways. Don't look so worried. I checked, and we are allowed in the archives without permission. You just don't normally see Sudasi and Bomani down there because most don't know how to read. But then, what about that Domini from before? Honestly, we probably startled him just as much as he startled us. How often do you really think people go down there and actually stop on those two floors? Z gazed into Tess's golden eyes and shrugged. Not often, I guess. The majority of the people here capable of reading are Domini, and most of them could not care less about what's stored in the archives beneath their feet. The only texts they care about are a few that may be relevant to their dealings. And only the Rexes and Capus Rex would have any need of a significant number of texts, and you can guarantee they don't go down there to fetch the books themselves. No, they would send Sudasi. Exactly! The corner of Tess's mouth curved up into a crooked smile as she appraised Z's sweat-covered face. Would you prefer to wash up before we go? Yeah, there's a while yet before sundown anyways. We might as well eat on the way then, too. Katya oversees the kitchens tonight, so we'll be able to sneak something. The two women walked back inside toward the kitchens, grabbing some food and water on their way through. Katya grunted a hello at them as she wrestled and beat the bread dough on the counter in front of her. They continued on through the main hall as they nibbled on the bread they had snatched. Tasimi dropped crumbs into her bosom, and they both giggled as she tried to sweep them out. 
Bowden passed them on his way to the mess hall for dinner. He stared at the two of them as he went. Tessa's laughter faded when she saw the look on his face. Is he okay? she asked as they continued. Z frowned when she noticed what Tess was referring to. I think he's jealous of the amount of time I spend with you. I'm sure he'll be fine. Zateria skipped up the stairs of the Bomani wing with Tess close on her heels and quickly made it down the hall to her own room. Once inside, she gathered the clothes she would need. Let's go to the Sudasi women's baths, Tess said. Z made a face. Don't look at me like that, Tess chided gently with a laugh. It'll be mostly empty since everybody will be working dinner and we won't have to worry about men coming in. Can't we just use the bathing tub? It'll take too long to get it to my quarters and heat the water. Plus, I want a bath too while we're at it. And I don't think either of us wish to use dirty water or heat an entire new tub full. Speaking of dinner, why aren't you working it? There are some benefits to being a Dominiborn and having Findir as a brother, Tess said with a wink. Z shook her head. <laughs> Dominiborn. Tess grinned at her as they exited Z's room. Before Z had even closed her door, a Sudasi sped down the hall past them, clutching her hands to her chest. What's wrong with her? Z asked. Tess shrugged and the two of them set off toward the Sudasi wing, stopping only briefly at Tess's quarters to grab what she needed. They entered the Sudasi women's baths, and Z glanced around. It looked exactly like the Bomani baths, only there were privacy screens here if anyone should desire to use them. Z sighed as she placed her clothes away from the edge of the ground pool. Out of habit, she set her knife down next to the edge before she began to remove her leather armor. She heard Tess giggle. What? I don't think you'll need that knife in here. It's just the two of us. A sheepish smile found its way onto Z's face as she continued to remove the cloth layers under where the hardened leather had been. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw Tessa's lithe, bronze form emerge from beneath her Sudasi dress. Z froze. Even without looking at her directly, she could see the gentle swell of Tessa's breasts and the soft curve of her hips and buttocks. Seven hells. Heat flooded Z's cheeks, and she quickly entered the warm water to cover it up, breathing hard. Tess followed close behind. Even though Zateria knew the water would most likely come up to Tess's armpits, covering the majority of her body, she kept her back turned to her. Is everything all right? Tess asked. Hmm? Yes. It's just strange for me to be in here, I guess. And to be bathing with someone else. I'm not sure I've ever bathed with another woman before. Except perhaps with my mother and sister when I was young. Sister? Does it make you uncomfortable? Tess asked, swimming around so that she was in front of Z. No. Don't look. Don't look, don't look. Are you sure? Seven hells I looked. No. At Tess's giggle, Z glanced up and locked eyes with her terrified of looking anywhere else. Don't worry. It's just us. Just me here with you. That's part of the problem. Z nodded at her and barely let herself relax a fraction as she fought to keep her eyes from Tessa's body. All right, you have been listening to me, S.M. Lee, doing a reading from the Chronicles of Aranasia, book one. Thanks for listening. This was an episode of Book Clips. Check out the show notes for more on this book. And it would be great if you would rate the show and subscribe to the Lesbian Talk Show podcast channel for more woman-centered content. If you are an author of lesbian fiction, then send us your reading. You can find out how on the lesbiantalkshow.com reading.